What's going on guys? Welcome back to another exciting episode here on the channel. It kind of depends on where I'm at with my uploads, but if this is kind of the first video I post after like a few months, uh, sorry for the hiatus. I've been fishing a lot, I've been traveling a lot, it's been kind of just up and down and crazy, and I haven't really had time to actually make a video, but right now, this is our last day up here on beautiful Lake Vermilion in Minnesota. We've been hanging out with the Sims crew, shooting for the new CX lineup that's going to be coming out in the fall. And it's been just a super fun time. It's We've been up here for like seven days. I kind of came up here looking to musky fish because Lake Vermilion is known as one of the best musky lakes quite possibly in the entire world. So coming up here, I met up with my buddy Phoenix and we fished a couple days and it kind of just didn't happen. Vermilion, if you guys don't know, it's a pretty large lake. There's an east end and there's a west end. There's a central part. We're kind of here in a central part on Grandview Lodge. It's an awesome, awesome lodge. Big place. Sleeps a lot of people. It's been really, really fun. But it was kind of like hard to figure out like these musky and where they're at and when they want to feed. So, I mean, it took a lot of time. I did a little bass fishing with some of the guys up here and that was kind of fun. But my main goal was for sure to go out and musky fish and try and catch a musky. And so the grind kind of begins. If any of you guys have seen some of my previous musky videos, you guys know that musky fishing is an absolute grind and you have to put in a lot of time and a lot of hours into trying to figure them out. Especially when you're fishing a new lake and the lake isn't at its prime or at its best and it's a huge lake and there's so many different places that look really really good but a lot of them just aren't good so I, I a lot of time is spent just kind of running and gunning around thinking of spots where a big fish would live and a lot of days of not catching anything but luckily enough one of the dudes here that's kind of run the whole thing his name is Patterson you guys if you guys check out the hookup tackle YouTube channel when we were up in Wisconsin last year in October we fished with Patterson, really cool guy, and he was here on this trip. And I kind of talked to him of, like one of the few nights back. I'm like, hey, like, would you mind if I borrowed your boat to go musky fishing? Because Phoenix had to go back. He had to pick, get a new house. Like, so he had to leave. He got a new house. So I was kind of up here without a boat and nobody really to musky fish. So I asked Patterson, I'm like, hey, you mind if I borrow your boat? and just go out musky fishing like dude go for it absolutely so the first day i probably fished for like i don't know four or five hours without even seeing a fish i was running around all over the place honestly really just trying to figure it out and the whole time i'm fishing this lure if you guys aren't familiar with musky fishing this is called a bucktail more specifically it's a cowgirl double 10 refers to the blade size and it's just pretty much like a bass spinnerbait but just definitely enlarged you got two treble hooks one here in the rear and then you got another one kind of dressed in the middle so basically all that it is is there's just a wire that goes all the way through that attaches back here via shrink tube and it's pretty much just wire treble hooks dressed up in this tensile with two blades that rotate that create a, a really large vibration that moves those fish and gets their attention. And I was basically throwing this all day trying to see if I can get one because this lake is, is known for the fish to eat bucktails like pretty hard. So I was like really, really determined to try and catch one on the bucktail. I came up here in Minnesota down in the metro back in June I fished with Phoenix for like seven days. I didn't catch a single fish. I had one come into the eight on a bucktail, eat it, and I just messed up the hook set. I went with the fish instead of going back towards it to get the hooks in the fish's mouth. Like, dude, like all the buildings were brand new, so they had to redo it. Wild. We're
kind of unfortunate, but that's just how musky fishing goes. That was pretty much my only shot of the entire trip, so I don't really have any footage to really show from that, except for the one that I missed boat side, but after that, I was really determined to try and catch one on the bucktail, and up here, I knew I had a pretty good shot at doing it. So, probably four or five hours into the day, I noticed that the wind had picked up quite a bit, and so I had fished with the guy named John Hoyer a few days prior, and I was talking to him about musky fishing because he's a legendary musky fisherman, and he's caught in so many 50 inch plus fish on this lake, so I was kind of picking his brain while we were smallmouth fishing, and he's like, yeah, they love this super choppy, windy stuff, and they like to pull out onto these reefs, and so I decided to pull up to one of the reefs, you guys will see that just super windy, you know, a decent swell going on, and I started fishing this bucktail. So that was the very first muskie that I've ever landed all by myself. It was definitely hectic. I can't believe that I didn't lose that fish. I mean, it threw the box tail right there at the end. Luckily, when it threw it, it threw it this way, but then turned around and like swam right back into the net, got into the net, and I somehow luckily was able to land that fish. It was just a little 39 inch fish. For up here, like, it's an okay fish, but for sure there's just a lot of those nicer grade fish from like 44 all the way up to like 55 inch fish. So I wasn't too thrilled about the size, but overall I look back on that fish and I'm super stoked because I did it all by myself. You know, I didn't have too much help. I didn't have any guidance. Nobody told me to go fish that reef. I just decided to go fish it, saw it on the map, went there, got it halfway back to the boat and that fish crushed that bucktail. So that was the first muskie of the entire camp. Not really anybody else was kind of fishing for the muskie. A lot of guys were fishing for smallmouth and walleye, and I was pretty much the only dude to do it. And so everybody was kind of stoked on that fish. We got some really good shots of it for Sims, and that was that for that fish. So after catching that muskie, uh, I kind of didn't see another one or catch another one for Quite a while even after that, I had probably pulled like maybe one other one that was like a really nice one that I've been chasing all week, but it just never went. So it kind of started to turn into a grind and I was thinking like, ah, well, maybe I won't catch another one this trip. And if so, that's fine. I mean, it's hard enough just to catch one muskie. So it was whatever in my mind. I was just like, well, we'll keep trying. If not, then that's cool. But it is what it is. That's musky fishing a lot of the times. So the next day, I go out, don't see a fish, don't catch a fish, nothing. So I was kind of discouraged and I was like, well, 
basically got one more day to kind of figure it out. And that night, I met up with a guy here. His name is Luke. He's another professional musky fisherman. And he's also a guide out here on this lake. And, you know, we just fished at night for a little bit. We talked about musky fishing. And he pretty much gave me this lure right here. And this is called a flap tail. And that night he gave me this bait. He's like, hey, if you want to catch a giant, like a 50 plus, throw this lure. And I was like, this bait? Like, if you look at it for the first time from like a bass fisherman's mindset, it is like the wildest looking lure. I mean, it's pretty much just like a cedar plug with two arms that extend with treble hooks on it. You got this little blade in the back and what that blade pretty much does is it twists, turns, it goes side to side and it makes just like a slight clacking noise. It's a pretty subtle bait overall. There's not a whole lot to it. It wobbles just like a little bit, but that's basically it. And obviously to my mind, it's like, dude, this thing is crazy. Like, I don't know if I can see a muskie eating it. Like, is it gonna shark it? It's gonna come up from underneath. Is it gonna come to the side? Like, I had no idea, but Luke was confident in the bait. He said he, like a week prior, he caught a 50 on it. So I was like, sure. I'll try and fish it and so I kind of picked his brain on when I should fish it how I should fish it so with this in boat I was like all right maybe maybe we have a shot at catching a giant but I was still kind of skeptical about the whole thing because I mean it's an absolutely wild lure I mean most of musky baits are just crazy unique baits that really just are supposed to draw a fish's attention not really all about the realism with these fish like it is in largemouth fishing like with my big swim baits, I try and keep it as natural, as realistic as possible. I mean, you look at like the baits with Magnum or the Huddleston, like super realistic baits that have incredible detail. And then you look at a musky bait and it's like, what the fuck? It's crazy. So after this, I was like, all right, let's go ahead and give this thing a shot whenever I have an opportunity to fish it. So basically that night I fished it, nothing. I pulled a really big one on it, a fish that I'd seen previously in the week, but it didn't want to bite it, but I was like, whatever. I mean, I don't expect one to eat this thing, it's crazy. So then the next day I asked one of the dudes here, his name's Cody, and he's a musky guy too. And he'd been kind of bass fishing and kind of fishing with Luke kind of for the past couple of days. And I was like, hey man, like, Luke's not here anymore, do you want to go musky fishing? And he was kind of hesitant at first, but then he was like, yeah, sure, let's go musky fishing. So that morning we fished around for a little bit and we kind of made uh, an executive decision to run over to a different side of the lake that I hadn't fished before. And he's like, yeah, I've been seeing them over there recently. I just don't know if they're gonna bite or not. But I was like, hey, fuck it, let's go run it up. So we go over there and we're probably like, four or five hours into the day. We haven't seen really much. We fish a weed bed. I pull like a super small one. He pulls like a decent one. I'm like, okay, the fish are starting to move. The wind is like just what I like. I think we can catch one. So I'm still fishing the bucktail, same exact bucktail. But what he's fishing is something that a lot of you guys might question, but it absolutely works. And that is a beaver bait. Beaver bait is basically what it is it looks just like a beaver you got this tail back here and you got this heavy lead head up in the front so it casts really really good and what you pretty much do with this is you pull it pause it you can burn it you can stop it and what that tail does in the back is it makes it look like it's swimming through the water it's definitely way more natural it's a little more subtle in the water but it's got a really good presence in the water it's got different joints kind of in it so it can go all over the place and that erratic nature of this bait is what triggers a lot of strikes so Cody picked it up started fishing it on this weed bed and well here's the footage
Woody. Yeah. We're on the stem strip. Yeah. I called in there a couple so days ago. You did? And yeah. you're like, alright, I'm done. I'm not gonna have a bass guy come and catch all my muskies. No, and no. What is he? Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. 47, Freaking dude. What did you catch it on, dude? <laughs> Show me. Show the folks at home. Do you guys bass fish with these? <laughs> dude, that's a beaver. Bait. It's a beaver. It's dude. a literal rodent. <laughs> <laughs> Look dude, at this thing. come on. Look at this bait. Look at it. Look at, it. <laughs> Look at that. Is that, that the dumbest thing you've ever seen? Dude, musky lures are insane. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Dude, right, what an fish. epic, epic fish. Show us this fish, dude. You look happy. I'm stoked, man. <laughs> I normally come out with the expectation of nothing's ever gonna happen. So when it does, you were bass fishing practically this whole yeah, week. Of... <laughs> yeah. I've been itching. Look at the do the yap on that. <laughs> oh. Yeah. All right. She's got some chompers. <laughs> <laughs> look how thick that fish is, dude. <laughs> Show me broad. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Just a beast. Just a yeah, beast, dude. man. <laughs> what a butt. <laughs> dude. We don't know what we're doing. No. <laughs> we're not supposed to do this. No. 47, dude. 47. Heck yeah, All man. Alright, we're gonna snap some pictures. Yeah, Cody caught a nice 47 incher, beautiful, beautiful fish, awesome on this exact bait right here, and we were really, really stoked. He had finally caught one, it was kind of like a slump buster for him, so it was dope to net it and the whole thing go down. It was really, really rad. So, and I just remember him, what happened was he got bit, swung, and then the fish tried to turn around, eat it again, and like since the fish was so long, the bait kind of got like, I guess he, the fish missed it and it got it in the back. But yeah, that fish was kind of jazzed on the bait and he was really, really stoked on it. Earlier that day, Luke actually caught a 52 incher on the same exact bait and that's why Cody decided to put down the bucktail and throw this thing. So we were really soaked on that and then we were like, all right, it's like 2.30, let's go back in. We got like a minor coming up at four o'clock and we'll go even further to go see if we can't catch a mega one because the bite might be on. So we went in, ate some food, went back out, and it was time to go try and catch a giant. So me still throwing the bucktail, we pull up to the zone, how he's like, dude, we've been seeing them in here, they just haven't been biting, so hopefully today is the day that they bite. And we're fishing this nice spot where it kind of has like current going through it, and I'm throwing the bucktail and I had noticed all day he'd been doing like a stop and go or like a rip and pause So I was like, let me give it a shot. So my first time doing it. I was like, do 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 I like to think of a seal lake as almost like a river And whatever the wind does is what the current is for that day yeah. Okay. Beef? <laughs> Dude, tell me about this thing. Nice. He uh, called it. He's like, yo, they like to sit in these little eddies. And uh, made a cast. Real, real, real stop. Real, real, real stop. Real? real? Take my bucktail. <laughs> oh no, I got a fish, dude. Nice little, probably 37 incher. All right, let's get this fish out of here. <laughs> 
and then you just ready? Yep. Fucked me up, didn't ya? You fucked me up, didn't ya? See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. So yeah, that was probably like a little 36 or 37 inch muskie. At first, I honestly didn't think I had it because sometimes what will happen is when you pause this bait, the leader will kind of get wrapped up in the blades and it will feel like super heavy and that's why I was like, I don't know if I've got a fish. And then I felt a head shake. I'm like, oh shit, I do have a fish on. So nice little 37 incher. Super happy about that fish on the bucktail. So I was like, dude, holy crap, I've caught two muskie this trip. This is absolutely insane. So, you know, I'm stoked and he's stoked. And it's like, all right, dude, they're in here. They're in here to like keep casting. So I'm kind of getting like the camera gear re like set up, putting it away. And all of a sudden, dude, like we start fishing literally five minutes later. Cody's throwing the beaver again, and this happens. Let's go. Let's go. Hold up. Hold, net, net up. Yep. Players. Yep. Need players now. Yep. Yeah. So I just caught one. <laughs> and you just hey, caught Jeff. one. <laughs> 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 Let's go. Hand still bleeding, literally from five yep. minutes ago, and he's like giant. <laughs> Dude, are you fucking kidding? <laughs> I, what did I say? I'm like, we are gonna catch one in this bay, dude. We are and gonna catch one do? right now. What did we do? <laughs> Fish. Hey, dude. <laughs> What's up? Oh, oh. baby. <laughs> You're insane, oh. dude. <laughs> hey, Cody, it's a little bitey. It's a little... <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bitey. Basically, two next... <laughs> like, insane. two more casts. I like, I like, dude, they, they really like those little pockets. And yeah. then we saw a couple on side imaging right here and then you caught that one and i'm like oh it's going oh, down oh my gosh these like, this group of fish is gonna bite <laughs> dude we got this big another, sucker dude another thick <laughs> one dude it's another thick oh. one she's pissed dude she, is she, doesn't, like she doesn't like you she doesn't like you about anything <laughs> dude <laughs> oh. Oh my Dude, god. Look at her snapping at you. I know. <laughs> oh shit. Oh my god. She is so pissed. Dude, she's not happy. Look at her bite on the neck. I got you. Oh. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Number two. <laughs> Number two. Let's go, baby. Dude. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, that's dude. so awesome. Oh, oh god. Oh. <laughs> so crazy. Alright, yeah. I got 44. Yeah. Nice. Dude, nice. Sick one. Let's go. go. Okay. Alright. I think she might be ready. I think she's ready. <laughs> Look at that. That's awesome. Awesome fish. You kind of just wait for them to get their bearings, and she's very hot and ready to go. Bye! <laughs> Let's go right, catch a 50, one, dude. dude. <laughs> Not a whole lot of footage because he's fishing in the back of the boat, but he catches that beautiful 44 incher, and like now we're like double stoked. We're like, holy shit, like it is going down today, right now, and we're like absolutely losing it at this point. So I'm like, dude, like it could happen. And Cody's like, dude, we're catching a big one tonight. So we fished for like another two and a half hours or so. 
and nothing. We see them on side scan, but that's about it. We don't get any followers or anything like that. And at this point, the sun's starting to go down. It's about to set. And I'm like, all right, I'm done throwing the bucktail. Let me pick this stupid thing back up and see if it's going to work or not. And I start fishing it, and we're fishing like some pretty good zones that we thought would hold some fish. I don't see a fish follow this thing. I don't get a bite on it. I'm like, dude, this bait probably catches fish, just not really for me. So we go kind of back in the same area where we caught those fish earlier, and literally sun's about to set. I'm throwing this bait around, and well, this happens. Got him, dude. Nice. Nice. Just head down. Ride to the wall. Ride to the wall. Ride to the wall. Oh, fuck yeah, I did. Yep. Yeah. Oh, my. Oh. Oh, my God, dude. That's a, that's a fucking monster. That is a fucking monster, man. That is a fucking monster. Oh my god, dude. What dude, that's was a that? fucking monster. There's your 50, dude. That's your 50, dude. That's your 50. That's way over 50. Way, way over 50. Way, way over 50, dude. Dude, way over 50, the fucking cleat. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I never do that shit. Dude, dude, I... you got oh, <laughs> Thank you. Dude, thank you. That thank spot's you. so good. <laughs> Did you see dude, that? oh, I watched it. Did you see that bucket boy? You gotta get your ass over here right now. <laughs> giant. Jeff just caught a giant. Oh my god. Dude, that's a fucking giant, dude. That's a Jeff. fucking giant. Jeff. That's a fish of a fucking <laughs> lifetime, man. Dude, dude, that's a fish of a lifetime. Dude. That we is just a... did it. We just did it, dude. We literally <gasps> Dude, it, that dude. is the fish of a lifetime. Holy shit. Oh my god. Jesus, Jeff. Jesus, Jeff. Are you recording? Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> dude, a 53. Dude. 53 and a half. Yeah. 53 and a quarter. 53 and a half. Yeah. 53, 53 and a half, dude. Oh, 53 and a half. Oh my gosh, Jeff. Oh my gosh, Jeff. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's perfect. Bender, bender tail towards me. Put this knee, this knee up. This knee up. And balance your, balance your elbow on your knee. If you know what I'm saying, that'll help. All right, tilt her a little towards me so that tail flex out. Yep, beautiful, beautiful. Oh my gosh, Jeff. That's it. Oh my gosh. What a beast. Dude. What a beast. What a beast. This thing's huge. Dude, that is, you're going to have so hard of a time beating that. <laughs> Way to freaking go, dude. So yeah, absolute pandemonium uh fish of a lifetime 53 and a half inches just absolutely shatters my previous personal best at 41 and a half uh i couldn't believe it unfortunately the the boat angle wasn't with the fish eat but i just remember having the bait going like this back to me and seeing this white mouth come up and do this and just start shaking and i'm like does it have it and that's when I start to swing in and load up on the fish and it, it kind of just gets drugged in like you would think like a giant bass would be. It's just 
uh, getting drugged in and that net job was just it was definitely scary in the moment I'm like please get in the net and if you notice the net gets caught in that cleat on the boat and that's why it didn't go in the first or second third time but luckily enough the fish was hooked just well enough right on the top of the mouth with just one treble hook on the back and we got the fish of a lifetime um, honestly it still really hasn't hit me because that was last night and I still hasn't really processed with me because that's just that's a giant fish that's a really really big musky catching a 50 or a 51 is like super impressive but catching a humpback 53 and a half is something that I'll never forget probably for the rest of my life and on the bait that I honestly didn't think I'd ever catch a fish on but Luke was right if I wanted to catch a big one you throw this thing so I mean absolutely huge shout out to John Hoyer to Luke to Cody and Patterson for pretty much the encouragement the advice the guidance and just overall being really cool guys and kind of telling me and teaching me all the ways of musky fishing up here on beautiful vermilion uh, I can definitely see myself spending like a couple weeks up here trying to figure out and catch an even larger grade fish because I think like the second thing I told Cody I'm like what now like how, like how hard is it to catch a 54 or a 55 inch or now like they only get so big after a while so I mean other than that like it's gonna be a grind to catch a 54 or a 55 so I definitely have some time to try and beat that but I mean I think that's my fifth time musky fishing ever and um, it's insane it's absolutely crazy so that's basically our trip up here we're about to leave packing up the cabin right now huge shout out to everybody here at Sims for being so cool for this past week it's been really really awesome and until next time thank you guys ever so much for watching and as always go out there and chase your dreams